Today I am gonna tell you about how to use the Fluent Validation in your ASP.NET Core Web API project. So you can validate uh, the user inputs. So uh, the package uh, which we need to install for your Fluent Validation is fluentvalidation.asp.NET Core and uh, we have a different type of uh, depend uh, different type of ways to register the dependency for fluent validation uh, we can uh, uh, do it manually uh, as well as automatic uh, if you are doing the manually then uh, if you have to manually uh, inject the uh, register those dependencies into by using the add transit method uh, and the i validator uh, interface where we need to define the validator class and the model which is student for example and in the automatic registering of the validators uh, we can achieve it by using the register validators from assembly containing and uh, register validator from assemblies so let's move to the coding part so we can achieve the fluent validation in ASP.NET Core Web API here is our uh, API, uh, solution for uh, ASP.NET Core Web API uh, first let's install the package which is fluent validation dot ASP.NET Core let's install this oh I have already installed it so you can install this uh, into your solution once it is installed then we have to create the validator for our API uh, response object request object I'm creating a new uh, folder for containing all the validators I have a student controller so I'm making a student validator In student validator it has to be inherited with the abstract validator with the class which we want to validate for example I have student class yeah inside student class we i have these properties first name last name email and age so let's make the constructor and inside constructor we can define the rules for our model object which is student and for example we have first name so i can apply for example it must uh, not be empty and next we can define for email it has to be email address so I have defined the two rules one for first name and email uh, for the student object let's create one endpoint in student controller create or update student somebody we have a student it has to be a HTTP post 
display name could be anything yeah here we perform the logic to create or update student I'm not creating here so I'm just making an object of it example response object and just returning it name which is our student dot first name and student dot last name and email which is student dot email so I'm returning the object okay with ok response so our endpoint is ready let's register this fluent validation into our program file so if we have a ASP.NET Core web API project so we can easily register after the add uh, in, after the add controllers for example add fluent validation it has ex some action methods action properties like x dot include implicitly validate all the child properties by default it is false let's make it true and uh, we have different type of ways for example first manually i can register the my validator like example add transient We have to use the I will data class inside I will I will data of fluent validation inside I will data we have to define the class which is going to be validated and uh, the validator name which is going to be perform the validation so it is done we can register the fluent validator manually so our student class student validator and the endpoint is ready let's run this so our swagger open let's see whether our api endpoint validates the input or not let's make it empty and execute so our uh, api is validating the inputs for example first name first name must not be empty and the email address is not a valid email address so fluent validation is working 
by using the manual registration of well data let's try the another automatic register comment this out and using the automatic register method register the validators next start register validator from assemblies I am well uh, registering the validator from assembly so I am using the app domain dot current domain dot get assemblies it will get all the assemblies which is derived from abstract validators so it's all done let's run that again So let's check it out again by registering by using the automatic registration. Empty the first name and try to execute the API. Yeah, again you can see it is working. Uh, now we have used the automatic registration of uh, by using the assemblies. let's check out uh, one more thing whether our api is returning the right result or not student email could be student at the rate gmail dot com age could be 20 let's execute this So here you can see we get the result. We return the name and the email. Name and side name we concatenate the first name and the last name. So it's working as expected. So if you find this video helpful, then please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.